They're betting $20 billion on a dream everyone else abandoned. While the world's airlines send their A380s to desert graveyards, Emirates is doing something that defies every trend in modern aviation. They want to resurrect the Super Jumbo. It's midnight in Dubai. 500 passengers stream onto a gleaming double-decker, bound for Sydney. Meanwhile, in Munich, in Kuala Lumpur, identical giants sit silent under dust sheets, their engines wrapped in plastic, their futures written off. Everyone else has moved on. Smaller jets, twin engines, flexibility over scale. But not Emirates. They've put $20 billion on the table for something that doesn't even exist. An A380neo, a reimagined super jumbo with next-generation engines, composite wings, the works. Tim Clark, their legendary president, is pushing Airbus to restart a production line that they've shut down to revive an aircraft the industry declared obsolete. Here's what fascinates me. Is this aviation's most audacious gamble or the last desperate act of a dying philosophy? Could one airline's obsession actually force the entire industry to rethink what's possible? Could the world's largest passenger jet rise from the ashes and rewrite the rules of long-haul travel? Today, we dive into aviation's boldest bet, where ambition collides with economics, where vision meets reality, and where one carrier's refusal to let go might just change everything. Aviation never looks backward. It's an industry built on progress, newer, faster, and efficiency. In 2021, when Airbus rolled out the final A380 out of their Toulouse factory, the message was clear. The age of four-engine giants was over. Airlines worldwide, they'd already started parking their super jumbos in boneyards, trading spectacle for efficiency. Except Emirates refused to get the memo. While competitors quietly retired their fleets, Emirates poured billions into cabin retrofits and then did something nobody expected. They offered Airbus $20 billion to build a brand new version. In a world obsessed with twin-engine efficiency, one airline is fighting to revive the double-decker dream. They're not just maintaining their existing fleet of 116 A380s, of which 95 regularly fly. They want more. Better ones. A complete reimagining with cutting-edge engines and advanced composites. But why would any rational airline executive make such a move? If the A380 did have a spiritual home, it's Dubai International Airport. Walk through Terminal 3 at any hour and you'll see them, row after row of double-deckers wearing Emirates livery. They operate 95 of these giants, that's over 50% of all A380s still flying anywhere on Earth. But this goes deeper than just numbers. While airlines like Air France and China Southern have retired their A380 fleets completely, Emirates literally just bought four A380s from their lesser. This is a $180 million bet that Emirates still hugely believes in the Super Jumbo, and it tells us they don't plan to retire these planes anytime soon. The A380 is probably the most profitable asset we've got, Tim Clark once said, and he means it. This isn't sentiment, it's strategy. Emirates built their entire business model around high-capacity hub operations. 50 million passengers a year flow through Dubai, connecting east to west. The A380? That's their conveyor belt, moving more people per landing slot than any twin jet can match. But here's where it gets wild. Clark is not satisfied with keeping the current fleet alive. He wants something revolutionary, a completely reimagined A380, the A380neo. I still have a design in front of Airbus as to how they could build a new one which would be 25% cheaper to run. Far more fuel efficient than this one, Clark explained when speaking to industry publication Executive Traveler. When Airbus responded that such a project would cost $20 billion to develop, Clark didn't blink. His reply? If you build them, we'll buy them. Would you spend $20 billion to revive an airplane that everyone else has abandoned? Every other airline's CEO, they'd call this madness. In an industry pivoting to flexibility and fuel efficiency, why double down on size? Maybe because Emirates sees something that others don't. Or maybe they're so invested in this vision, they can't afford to see it any other way. Which raises the question, is this brilliant leadership or dangerous tunnel vision?
So, what exactly is Emirates asking for? An A380 that burns 25% less fuel. That's the promise of the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan engine, a technological marvel with a 140-inch fan diameter and geared turbofan architecture that would transform the Super Jumbo's economics. But Tim Clark's version, it goes even further. He wants carbon fiber wings, not just any wings, swept back beauties with folding tips that cut drag all while still fitting into today's airport gates. The tail redesigned, slimmer and lighter, the fuselage incorporating lessons from the A350's composite construction. This isn't just an engine swap, it's a complete reimagining. Step inside Clark's dream plane and you'd find Emirates' signature luxury amplified. Those famous shower spas, still there but even more efficient. First class suites with closing doors, upper deck lounges buzzing with conversation and adaptive LED lighting that adjusts to your circadian rhythms. 600 passengers moving in unmatched comfort. But here's the engineering challenge that nobody talks about. Mounting those massive ultrafan engines, it means repositioning the wings. New pylons, reworked hydraulics, structural changes that ripple through the entire design. And those carbon fiber wings? Yeah, they need entirely new production lines too. New tooling, new expertise that doesn't even exist yet. The price tag would be staggering. We're talking billions just to develop it before a single aircraft rolls off the line. Airbus would need to retool factories currently pumping out A321neos. Is this vision or is it fantasy? The technology exists. The question is whether anyone besides Emirates is willing to pay for it. Because without other buyers, this remains what it is today, the world's most expensive blueprint. Let's talk money, real money. Operating an A380 today? That costs between $25,000 and $35,000 per flight hour. Those onboard showers? They're running on some of the most expensive fuel burn in commercial aviation. But what if you could change that equation? The A380neo, with its ultrafan engines and lighter structure, promises to slash fuel consumption by 25%. That brings hourly costs down to, let's say, $18,000 to $25,000. Still not cheap by any stretch, but suddenly a lot more competitive. Now, compare that to the competition. A Boeing 777-9? That'll burn about $17,000 worth of fuel per hour, carrying 426 passengers. The Airbus A350-1000? Even less, around $15,500 for 369 seats. On pure trip cost, twins win every time. So, why is Emirates still pushing? The magic happens when you divide by seats, pack 600 passengers into an A380neo, and suddenly your per seat costs look different, especially at airports where landing slots are gold. Heathrow, JFK, Hong Kong. When 500 people want to fly London Sydney daily, Clark argues, you don't solve it with two smaller planes, the airport infrastructure demands our efficiency. He has a point, at slot constrained hubs, moving more bodies per takeoff is pure economics. But here is the brutal truth. Airbus spent $25 billion developing the original A380. They never made that money back. A Neo problem would cost billions more. New engines, new wings, new production setup. Would anyone besides Emirates buy it? That's the multi-billion dollar question, because without at least 100 orders, the math simply doesn't work. And right now, Emirates is the only one at the table with their checkbook open. Here's an uncomfortable truth. The airline industry, it's already made a choice. They voted with their orders. Boeing 787s, Airbus A350s, twin engine efficiency over four engine capacity, point-to-point -point flexibility over hub concentration. Air France retired their A380s early. Lufthansa parked many of theirs. Even Middle Eastern carriers like Etihad, once believers in the super jumbo dream, They've quietly stepped back, retiring three out of their ten planes already. Why did everyone abandon ship? Simple, most routes don't need 600 seats, even the busy ones. Airlines discovered they'd rather fly a 787 twice daily than an A380 once. It gives passengers choice, reduces risk, and opens new city pairs that can't fill a super jumbo. But Emirates sees a different future. At the world's most congested airports, think Heathrow's 480,000 annual movement cap. Every slot matters. If you can move 600 passengers instead of 300, you've doubled your revenue potential per landing. 
From Dubai to London, Dubai to Sydney, these trunk routes with massive predictable demand, maybe the A380neo makes sense. But that's a shrinking niche. Most airports, they're not slot constrained. Some cities with slot constrained airports, like Sydney, they're building brand new airports that can operate 24 7. Most routes don't have that kind of consistent volume. The Super Jumbo's natural habitat keeps getting smaller. So, here's the critical question Is Emirates fighting for a viable future, or are they the last believer at a party? Everyone else has left. Because if Airbus invests billions in the A380neo and only Emirates shows up to buy it, that's not a market, that's a custom build. And in commercial aviation, custom builds are where profits go to die. The question isn't whether Emirates wants it, it's whether anyone else does. Behind the A380neo headlines, Emirates is hedging their bets. They've ordered over 200 Boeing 777Xs, the real successor to their aging fleet with GE9X engines and rooms for 426 passengers. It's the practical choice, the efficient choice, the choice every airline consultant would recommend. But here's the plot twist. The 777X is years behind schedule. Boeing keeps pushing back delivery dates, leaving Emirates in an uncomfortable position. Their current 777-300ERs are aging. Their A380s need expensive D-checks. Every delay forces them to spend more on old metal. Suddenly, that A380neo, it doesn't look so crazy. From Clark's perspective, if Boeing can't deliver the 777X on time and your A380s need replacing anyway, why not push for something revolutionary? Why not use this leverage to create your dream aircraft? This is Emirates' fascinating dilemma. Do they follow the industry toward efficient twins or do they double down on what made them unique? Scale spectacle, and the kind of passenger experience you can only deliver with a double-decker. The 777X represents the safe path, proven economics, industry consensus, the smart money choice. The A380neo, it represents something else entirely, a bet that bigger still matters, that passenger experience trumps fuel burn, that Dubai's unique geography demands unique aircraft. Which vision wins, it might depend less on strategy and more on timing. If the 777X keeps slipping, Emirates' appetite for alternatives it only grows. And sometimes in aviation, desperation drives the most interesting innovations. What would you choose? Let's address the elephant, or rather the whale in the room. How can a 600-ton aircraft ever claim to be environmentally responsible? Emirates argue the math works. Those ultrafan engines? They'd cut fuel burn by 25%. Add on carbon fiber wings, aerodynamic refinements, and weight saving throughout, suddenly your per passenger emissions they start approaching modern twin jets, but only if you fill every seat. Fly an A380neo at 60% capacity and you're burning massive amounts of fuel to move empty seats. The environmental case it depends entirely on the Dubai London trunk routes staying packed every single flight. What about sustainable aviation fuel? Emirates is pushing hard here, promising their Neo would run on high SAF blends. But let's be honest, SAF production today, it's a droplet in an ocean of jet fuel demand. It's more promise than reality. Here's what really should keep everyone up at night. Regulators are tightening the screws, Europe's emissions trading scheme, coarser requirements. The pressure to decarbonize is not just mounting, it's accelerating. Every new aircraft program faces scrutiny that didn't exist when the original A380 launched. Can a super jumbo navigate this new reality? Maybe. If you believe bigger planes means fewer flights, if you trust Emirates to maintain those spectacular load factors, if you think hub consolidation beats point-to-point -point sprawl. But those are big ifs. The greenest aircraft might simply be smaller, flying more direct routes, burning less fuel per trip, even if slightly more per passenger. So here's the ultimate question. In 2030's aviation landscape, can biggest ever equal greenest? Or is that just the paradox Emirates needs us to believe? It's 2040. You're walking through Dubai's Terminal 3, past holographic departure boards, and you find yourself boarding an A380neo, bound for London Heathrow. The stairs curl upward, flooded with natural light from large panoramic windows. You hear laughter from the upper deck lounge, business travelers mixing their own drinks while kids press faces against the glass, watching planes taxi below. 
your reimagined Emirates business class suite door closes with a soft click. Emirates, if you're watching this, please install doors on your future business class seats. Take off, it barely registers. The composite wings flex like living things, absorbing turbulence before you feel it. You're moving with 599 other people, but it feels intimate, personal. This is the dream Emirates is selling, but dreams cost money. Every detail I just described, the whisper quiet engines, the flex wing smoothness, the hotel suite privacy, requires billions in development. Thousands of engineering hours, a leap of faith that enough people want this experience to justify its existence. Snap back to today. That A380neo exists only in PowerPoints and passionate speeches. Between Clark's vision and that boarding bridge stands an Everest of obstacles – technical, financial, environmental. The question isn't whether this experience would be magical. It would. The question is whether magic is enough to move mountains, or if sometimes, even in aviation, dreams have to surrender to reality. So, here we are, $20 billion later. Emirates has laid everything on the table – money, reputation, their entire vision for aviation's future. They've asked Airbus to resurrect a giant the world walked away from to build something that defies every trend in modern aerospace. On one hand, the case is compelling – ultrafan engines slashing fuel burn, composite wings cutting weight, 600 passengers moving in unmatched comfort between the world's megacities. At slot-constrained airports, the math might actually work. On the other hand, the obstacles are mountainous – billions in development costs, a market that's voted decisively for smaller jets, environmental pressures that grow stronger every year, and the uncomfortable fact that outside Dubai, nobody else seems interested. So, what is Emirates really doing here? Maybe they're visionaries, seeing a future where hub airports get so congested that only super-high-capacity aircraft make sense, where passenger experience trumps everything, where bigger can actually mean better. Or maybe they're chasing ghosts, fighting for the spirit of an era when aviation meant spectacle, when airlines competed on grandeur instead of algorithms, pursuing a battle the industry has already decided. Here's what I think. Both can be true. Emirates might be chasing a ghost, but sometimes ghosts point us towards futures we couldn't otherwise imagine. Their refusal to accept the industry consensus, it focuses everyone to question assumptions, to ask whether efficient is always right, whether smaller is always smarter. The A380neo, it may never fly, but the questions it raises about scale, efficiency, and what we really want from flight, those questions matter. So, I'm asking you. Should Airbus take the bet? Can one airline's obsession reshape an entire industry? Or is this just the last magnificent delusion of an aviation super jumbo age? Drop your thoughts below, because this conversation about scale, efficiency, and what we really want from flight, it's far from over. And if you love diving deep into aviation's biggest what-ifs, subscribe for more. Until next time, keep looking up. The skies are changing. The question is, into what?